I neglected to introduce myself at the beginning, so I'll do it now. Sorry for that. My name's Kevin O'Brien, and I'm a member here at St. John that uh, uh, has the, the gift, the pleasure, and the ability to fill in for Pastor Mark when he's out of town, and so that's what I will be doing today. In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells a vineyard parable which serves as an image of Israel. It tells about the prophet's missions as they were sent to Israel and ultimately about Christ's death. Jesus tells the parable to the religious leaders who are plotting his death, revealing that their plans will ironically bring about his salvation. And that's very important and an important aspect of the parable. But there's another lesson in it that I want to explore today. In today's parable, we learn of a landowner who has planted a vineyard, leased it to tenants, and had gone to another country. In Jesus' time, it would typically take up to five years before a vineyard would be capable of producing fruits. It's not so great a stretch to think that after a while, these tenants may have begun to really feel like they owned the vineyard especially since they hadn't seen the owner in a long while. Isn't that a danger for us today? I know it is for me. The title to my house has my name on it. The car title has my name on it. Certainly the electric and water bills when they come to the house have my name on it. And the bank account has my name on it. It's easy to begin to feel like we own the things that we are blessed with. Well, you heard what happened next in the parable. The tenants of the vineyard who chase away those that come on behalf of the owner, even killing his son, uh, who came for the produce. And this landowner reminds us that God is the ultimate landowner and we're merely his tenants. The landowner, in this case, proves to be very forgiving and very persistent. And that's why we as Christians understand ourselves to be stewards of God's creation rather than owners. The Bible says that God is the owner of everything and that he gives humanity a stewardship to care for and manage those gifts. Although God gives us all things richly to enjoy. Nothing is really ours. Parents have likely experienced a conversation with very young children. I may have experienced this one myself, but I'll name no names. <laughs> a young daughter was eating some chips and I asked for one. She turned to me and said, no, these are mine. In what sense were they hers? She couldn't even open the bag herself, much less create them out of nothing. She is dependent on countless people involved in the growing of the potatoes, the cleaning and processing, cooking, packaging, distribution, sales, and ultimately purchasing and bringing to the home those chips. They're not truly hers in that sense. But that's often how we view the gifts of God. God created and owns everything in creation. We're simply responsible for how we treat it and what we do with it. So, a steward being one who is given the responsibility to manage or care for something, who's not the owner, a steward is simply the caretaker and accountable to the owner. In theory, this all sounds right and good. Few of us would dispute that. However, the issue of stewardship being lived out faithfully can be a constant challenge for us as believers. It's an important biblical concept, us being responsible for how we treat and what we do with God's blessings. Unfortunately, we often think that that idea applies only to money. The Holman Bible Dictionary defines stewardship 
as the utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. The Christian steward is not only responsible for the financial blessings that God provides, but also the spiritual gifts that are given through the Holy Spirit. God wants human beings to be his stewards in bringing about the peace in the places and with the people in which we find ourselves in this world. In the parable, Jesus seems to be teaching us that we are now the new tenants of God's vineyard. We've been entrusted with this world, with all that we have, and now are called to care for it well and to give our creator the fruits of all our resources, including our talents and our time. This aspect of the parable is a story about stewardship. In his book, A Spirituality of Fundraising, Henry Nouwen makes the claim that stewardship is essentially about relationship. How might we view God's justice and forgiveness, compassion, mercy, and grace, his deep care for us as a way to approach how we care for what God has entrusted us to? We are invited into relationship with him in which we experience Jesus and his love as we steward God's gifts. Pastor Mark mentioned a few weeks ago that a key aspect of grace is generosity. I found a quote from Dr. Michael Binder of Lutheran Seminary, of Luther Seminary, who is credited with saying, generosity is what God wants for us, not what he wants from us. Generosity is what God wants for us, not from us. For us, there's blessing in the relationships we experience as we spend time caring for each other where there is one in need, spending energy in building relationships as we go about being his hands and feet in the world, spending time and energy receiving and giving the peace in the many ways that we do in the various ministries like we have here at St. John. Being a steward of the gifts of time and talents, we've been blessed with not only what benefits us, but also what's benefiting those impacted by the ministry, as well as for those that see the example that you're setting as you do that. It multiplies itself. Relationships multiply, especially relationships in which we encounter Christ and his purpose for us as tenants. It's what God wants for us, not from us. It goes beyond just how we spend money. We need to embrace this larger biblical view of stewardship that connects everything that we do to what God is doing in the world. The kingdom of God is not ours to enjoy all to ourselves, but ours to share graciously and generously as God has with us. We're simply responsible for how we treat it and what we do with it. There's purpose in what God has given us right now. There is blessing in what he has given as we give in return. How might Jesus be inviting us, the new tenants, into a more generous way of living into his peace? It's our faith in him more than ourselves that results in the amazing things that are done through us in this world. As Jesus reminds us at the end of the parable, he is our rock and our cornerstone. Jesus is the foundation for our faith and the foundation for our lives. Even as we turn from Jesus and even as we may reject him at times, he returns to us with love and forgiveness with those second and third chances. 
And we are strengthened as stewards as he invites us into relationship and blesses us with a deeper understanding because of those relationships. And that certainly is good news for us today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this vineyard you've provided, for the unique gifts and talents you've provided to each one of us, and for the opportunity to put them uh, into use that we may experience and be blessed by what you truly want for us and not from us. Amen.